can you tell me a, a bit about yourself? All right. Um, yeah, my name's Cameron Stubbins, uh, the owner of Squisha House Artisan Glass and Smoke Shop. We've been open since July 21st, 2018, so just about seven months uh, here in Oakville, Ontario, Bronte Village. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, what can you tell me about the name Squisha House? Okay, so the reason we chose Squisha House is uh, it's a little play on the rap label Swisha House. Uh, it was like Mike Jones, Chameleon Air, Paul Wong. I'm a big fan of Houston rap, yeah. and I'm also a big fan of Rosin, where we were squishing the bud and uh, getting the concentrate out. Uh, so I thought it would be kind of cool play on the, the words Squisha House, so turning Squish into Squisha, and yeah, just uh, kind of mimic the logo a bit, and quite a few people do get it, some don't, so yeah. they have to ask what does Squisha mean, but yeah, in a sense, just uh, the house of rosin. For sure. What, um, what gave you the idea to open a Squisha House as opposed to just kind of a regular headshot? Okay, um, so the reason I wanted to open Squisha House mainly was I was finding it was hard to get rosin accessories. Like the, the press is one thing in itself, but then you still need pre-press, uh, you know, micron bags, and I couldn't find them anywhere. I had to order online and I thought like it would be great if there was a local shop I could go to and I could get all the stuff I need for pressing and, uh, you know, see glass and other stuff with the culture as well so for sure yeah yeah so aside from the supplies that you offer you said you offer the supplies for the rosin pressing what mm -hmm. else um do you offer in that kind of area for the pressing okay so we do have the squishing service uh that's where you can take lessons if you want to learn how to press rosin a lot of the times these machines can be quite costly so you don't want to make that investment if it's not something you first of all even know how to do second of all know if it's something you're going to want to do long term so we'll do classes where you can learn how to press uh, rosin. You would bring your own material and we can do classes in uh, seven gram, 14 gram, if you want to learn how to press ounces. And yeah, we take you through step by step, the process of pre-press, um, micron bags, temperature, how long to press, um, yeah. And from there, either people can return and do another course until they feel comfortable. But quite often after one or two classes even, yeah, usually they, they make a purchase and they want to start squishing at home. Yeah, and so people can buy the presses themselves here? Most definitely, yeah. We, awesome. sell, we sell all ranges of presses from uh, personal use to uh, commercial. Yeah. What, what is the usual price range on the presses? It can get up to about eight nine thousand dollars $9,000, but uh, starting presses can start at like $349, uh, $500, $600 range. You can get a nice personal press. A thousand dollars is about the range, maybe eleven $1 hundred for if you want to squish fourteen grams to an ounce, yeah. you'll want something around that price range. And then, yeah, I mean, like I say, they, there's some with all the bells and whistles. And yeah, so yeah. about about the price of like a heady rig, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so exactly, like, exactly, exactly. Perfect. Um, aside from the squishing process, what makes the house? Uh, what makes the squish a house different than any other head shop? So yeah, the main difference being uh, it's predominantly Canadian artists. Uh, we wanted to offer every price tier with uh, hand-blown borosilicate glass. Uh, so somebody starting for a hundred bucks yeah. can get an artist piece. They don't have to get that cheaper imported glass. And you know, most of us have the one or two rigs we started with yeah. and then finally got into the more heady, heady uh, artist pieces. So I just thought, you know, with all the artists out here, why not offer somebody to start their journey right away with an artist piece and as they progress, go a little more heady and, you know, yeah. so from starting range all the way up. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what was what was the kind of process for starting the Squisha House for you? So, like, when did you conceive the idea? How did you go about opening and such? Okay, so that that's kind of a funny question. It was probably a year prior. I had the idea. Um, I've been into concentrates and making rosin since it pretty much came about, since we all first started hearing about it on the internet and seeing yeah. it. Um, and I came up with the name Squisha House, and I thought it would be good for like a vape lounge, kind of a place where you can go press, yeah. treat it like a gym, have a monthly membership, day pass, sort of thing like that. And then I slowly decided, you know, again, with not a lot of shops offering the supplies, um, offering the presses at that point, I thought, why not have a shop with, you know, the artist pieces of glass and offer the rosin presses as well. So, now that you have the Squisha House opened up, 
Um, well, like, what's your current vision for the Squisha Hubs? Current vision is to uh, continue to get the customer base growing, uh, building the name, getting our name out there more and more every day. Uh, bringing in more artists, uh, we're constantly meeting new artists, carrying new artist glass, and just educating people on uh, you know why why to choose artist pieces, the quality of the glass, and just kind of uh, you know get people educated on why to go the artist route. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Basically. So can you list some of the challenges of being a like specifically a head shop owner? Like, yeah. So um, I guess some of the challenges are well, first off, it was. You know, the community here, there's not a lot of shops like this mm -hmm. uh, in Bronte Village. And um, yeah, we were worried maybe the community wouldn't accept us. Uh, it was just before legalization, so it was still that, you know, gray area, um, tobacco use era for the smoke shops. Um, but, you know, just staying involved with the community, uh, we recently we sold the glass poppies in November and yeah. donated some uh, money to the Legion down the road there. Just, yeah, just staying involved with the community and, um, you know, uh, some other things can be, yeah, you do have those, you don't want to over celebrate the big days because there are the days that are a bit slower. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, every day we find it's growing more and more, again, yeah. with us getting out there word of mouth. Um, interviews like this, the yeah. newspaper article we had in Halton, uh, Beaver. Well, how, how does social media affect owning a head shop maybe compared to before social media came about, maybe when you were growing up? Oh, largely huge. Um, definitely when we first started, I want to say like 70% of the business was uh, social media, the yeah. Instagram. Um, we're still just about to launch our website so hopefully that will uh, bring in some more some more sales but yeah social media is a major key uh, being able to interact with the customers uh, they can get in touch with you right away um, constantly showing the glass that comes in as opposed to you having to come here um, yeah it's it's very 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 important um, and with it's free promotion essentially like uh, you know you can't this is stuff that you used to pay a lot of money for to get your name out yeah right now they're giving you the platform and once you kind of get those followers and they put you onto their followers and they're now you've got this community of people that are interested in what you're posting so yeah. you're essentially advertising to not only it's not only free advertising but it's free advertising to the people that you want to advertise to so sure. yeah no it's it's very very important and uh yeah it's fun honestly to uh to see to be able to from both from the moment of selling a piece to then seeing it you know, in somebody's Views possession, and exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. no, it's uh, it's really nice to have uh, have the platform that we do, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Who are some of the artists that you would like to have in the shop that you currently don't have right now? Some artists that we don't carry, uh, definitely Duffy. We get asked quite often if we have Duffy stems or bowls, and uh, I know we do have uh, shop me to his Giovanni Observer G. Yeah. Uh, some of his pieces in here, and uh, they've been doing quite a bit i'm sure you've seen uh, yeah. some of their collabs yeah we we definitely would like to carry some of their work in here and the other one would probably be redbeard i mean uh, his work's amazing but also just his passion you know uh definitely one of the one of the leaders in the glass blowing community and uh no we would be honored to to one day carry some of his stuff in here for sure for sure yeah um how do you get in touch with artists like out of vancouver how do you start so it's kind of a mix. Uh, artists will reach out to us or yeah, again, if I see something that, uh, you know, maybe their, their works drawn my attention or customers sometimes put us on to uh, artists that we should be carrying or that yeah. they want to see in here. Um, social media, we go back to that. It's the easiest, quickest way. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, some of the other artists will put you on. I know for me, uh, I wasn't very familiar with Greenbelt's work, yeah. and it was Clark's. He showed me some of his work, and now, I mean, yeah, we've, we've had a few uh, Greenbelt drops here. So it's, okay. yeah, getting in touch with, again, your question was in touch with uh, like an artist in Vancouver. Yeah, it would be, the predominant one would be social media. Yeah, yep, that's the best way for all of us to keep in touch. Yep. What is some advice you can give to people trying to open up their own shops or thinking about opening up their own stores or galleries? That's, that's definitely a good question. So um, if you have, if you believe you can do it, for sure, you can. It's, it's not, there's no secret to this. Yeah. There's no, you know, there's no, I can't give you the, the secret recipe or anything. Just be prepared. It's, uh, it's a 25 hour, eight day a week job starting your own business, uh, yeah. any business. But definitely with this, 
Um, it took a lot. Uh, you definitely have to be on your toes. Uh, you know, besides just the business in and outs of sales and keeping track of inventory and that, it's yeah, like you say, meeting new artists, uh, constantly trying to keep your inventory fresh, mm -hmm. uh, not overbuying, not underbuying. I mean, yeah, it's it's a balancing act. But anyone getting into it, if you if you have the passion and it's something you truly want, yeah, you definitely can do it. Uh, just just stay focused, really, and don't. Don't get frustrated if you know you find a few hiccups on the way because it's just it's gonna happen. Um, there's always another answer, you know. If you run into one one problem, just sit back, uh, rethink it, and no, you can uh, you can make any anything like this happen. It's there's no secret. There's no secret to this. Um, but just, just hard work. It's, it's hard hard work. That's all. Yeah. If, sure. you, if you've got the drive, you can definitely do it. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, what can you tell me about your artist of the month program? So that was uh, an idea I had. I wanted to, I mean, we're artist based. We're, uh, you know, that's that's the big, other than the raws and pressing, that's the big thing here is uh, supporting Canadian artists and what better way to, to feature one for the month. Yeah. Um, we offer 10% off that month just to kind of also give a little, little enticement to, yeah, yeah incentive to uh, to buy from that artist. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's a great way for us to uh, just have that one little showcase where, you can stop and look at their stuff and for that month you know you know um kind of stumbling on my words but uh yeah it's nice to just kind of showcase their stuff for one month and yeah. uh yeah we do a little blurb i like to explain how they got into glass blowing how yeah. long have they been doing it um yeah it's a great way for you to kind of get personal or get to know a little bit about the artist uh the glass you're buying right yeah. a lot of times some people might not know a thing about these guys and uh, mm -hmm. that's a good way for them to to get some insight oh, okay they started this time mm -hmm. this is why they got into it yeah yeah, it's kind of cool um what do you see in the future for the swisher house so kind of like what does your next five years look like if you know what okay so um definitely hire some employees right now it is just me and, uh, and my fiance running the store um yeah definitely some employees and maybe uh, future locations, you know? We do get asked, uh, you know, are you gonna open one in Toronto? Or are you gonna open one in Brampton, Hamilton? Yeah, we get asked quite often, and uh, I could see it being, becoming uh, maybe a franchise, or you know, at least at least a couple of shops yeah. uh, spread around. Um, yeah, that would, that would be the vision. Other than that, just keep growing the brand, keep, keep the brand building. Um, it's, it's funny how, proud and how much we uh, promote Canadian, how many Americans have actually bought from us. And yeah. We recently just sent our first international, uh, we sent a Dave Skull rig out to France. Oh, so, nice. So yeah, it's kind of cool to see uh, the support from uh, yeah. the globe, essentially. So yeah, so, yeah with, with legalization in Canada, have you, what have you seen from that? So have you seen more of a global poll and like a more of a local? Definitely locally, yeah. With legalization, so it's a mix. Uh, we're getting a lot, we're definitely getting people who just have questions, they come in and they wouldn't have come in when it was illegal. Yeah. Uh, CBD is a big, a big thing we, yeah. we get asked about. Um, but yeah, no, uh, with legalization, uh, I just think, especially with the glass, it um, you're gonna get more, more social events, social gatherings, uh, people, you know, with it being legal, they're gonna be enjoying cannabis in more of a social environment. And, you know, it's like shoes, Cars, clothing, you know, some, you, you want to have your, how do you want to say, uh, you want to show your style with it or show, yeah. you know, your kind of, uh, express yourself, express it. yourself. Yeah. yeah. And so I think it's, it's becoming more just not wanting the standard bong. Okay. This works. I can smoke my flower to yeah. something more personal, you know, maybe the, the color is what drew you to it or, yeah. you know, um, like skulls or some of the. Yeah, characters, things like that. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, how important is it? Do you find to educate customers on artists when they come into the shop? Like, so if they're enticed by a piece, to tell them a little bit more about that artist. No, it's it's that. very important when when someone's buying. That's kind of again why I feel I think uh, I feel we wanted to open the shop to be uh, you know you getting an artist piece as opposed to a production piece. Um, like a big thing for me was when I started buying pieces that, you know, you have it and the next day 
your friend shows up to the session with the exact same things, yeah. right? There's no uh, no story behind it, just from a big company. Uh, I, I like when you're buying an artist piece, for you to know that little bit, maybe where are they from, when did they start blowing glass, uh, why, just because it kind of adds a little bit more more of the story for you, for, for now when you have it, yeah. you feel you, there's a little bit backstory to the piece and you, you almost feel like you know the artist, right? Yeah. Maybe you didn't even meet them, but you know a little bit about them and you've got their, you've got their work, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a good way to, to represent, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, with legalization and like the things like social media and stuff like that, how do you see Canadian glass blowing as a like as an industry? Oh, it's definitely gonna gonna keep growing, uh, blow up for sure. Uh, I definitely see the shops starting to take the trend of going more artistic glass yeah. route. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, you. I mean, we have so many artists, but you're just every day there's newer and newer ones starting up. And like you're seeing um, artists now opening seats to teach yeah. courses, stuff like this. So yeah, no, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And uh, like, again, with it being legal, the stigma's gone, you know, some of these pieces can get pretty expensive. And now some people with some money yeah. don't feel so uncomfortable buying it, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, no, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And uh, the Canadian scene, I think, is the next the next uh, big scene for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, what What other things do you sell at the Squisha House aside from the heady glass? So okay, yeah, uh, heady glass. Um, we do rolling trays, dab pads, rolling papers, and the biggest one, I guess, uh, vaporizers. We we do get asked quite a bit about that. Um, the Puffco Peaks, uh, volcanoes. Yeah. Um, other than that. Yeah, just our branded clothing stuff. Yeah. yeah. And art. Oh, definitely. I shouldn't forget that. Uh, local artists. So if you're a local artist, stop by. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely, we have space on the wall for you. And yeah, and anything, it's predominantly glass, but if you're anything Canadian art wise, we're, we're into promoting it. So sure. yeah, yeah, definitely. And lastly, what can you tell me about your upcoming website? Okay. So yeah, we've been asked like crazy about the website. Uh, yeah. When is your site going to be up? Uh, I'm, it's me dragging my feet. I'm putting the glass up. I promise you, uh, I will be up. I mean, hopefully within a week or two. Um, and yeah, like it's just, we're going to be able, you'll be able to go on there and order, order stuff without, you know, having to interact or anything. If, if you just want to go on and order a piece, you'll also be able to order for pickup. So if you see something dropping, you can instantly buy it and we'll have it wrapped up ready for you when you stop in. The other thing will be, uh, you know, little forms about rosin squishing what is rosin uh you know maybe little pieces artist of the month for sure we'll have little yeah. blurbs about that and um upcoming events things you know anything to do with the community we'll definitely uh have on there so you can keep up to date and uh yeah yeah stay informed with, uh, uh, yeah. with rosin in the cannabis community for sure yeah. all right so okay. i just want to say thanks to glass fanatic for the interview uh we're at 2336 lakeshore road west in oakville ontario squish a house stop by any time i'm cameron come in and say hi we'll teach you how to squish some rosin awesome thanks a lot Ken. Hey, no problem